tomorrow. Okay. And there could be some widespread severe weather that we'll be watching closely. Getting a better idea of the timing, I'm going to show you several computer models all saying basically the same thing. We're looking at the line probably arriving between 10 and 11 to our western parishes and then continuing very quickly through the area by the early afternoon. Quiet on radar, hit a few little light showers north of the lake, but nothing at least in southeast Louisiana, but different story just to our north and west. Some very active storms. Models so far over the last couple of days have been doing a fairly good job of forecasting the timing, placement, intensity of our storms, and hopefully that is a trend which continues. So notice the rainfall that is out to our west about where the models are saying they are now. We are going to stay quiet through the night tonight, not really worrying about anything through the overnight period. Now this model, this is the her, this is one we show fairly often, is a little bit more and usually is more aggressive with convection, with thunderstorm development. And it does have scattered to numerous showers through most of the morning. Now I'm gonna kind of stop here. I wanna go back a little bit and kind of reset some of my uh, pause points here because I wanna show you exactly when this model has the initial line moving into the North Shore parishes. We're starting off the morning again with kind of scattered rainfall. Then as we get toward, let's say pausing it here 930 or so in the morning scattered rain around the metro area few more on the North Shore, but here is that initial line and kind of showing almost a strong bow, which would indicate very strong winds. That may be the concern on the North Shore as opposed to south of the lake. Now, both sides of the lake will see that risk for tornadic storms, and a lot of that will occur right along this boundary. So here we go at 930 as we kind of step this through as the line moves so quickly by 10, 10, 10, 15, almost to the Louisiana Mississippi line and just starting to move into the metro area, continuing very quickly by noon, that leading edge with kind of the tail end of it over the metro area, already well to our east on the North Shore. And after that leading edge is passed, the risk of anything severe immediately starts to wane. Here's another model. This is the NAM model, starting to show the showers out ahead, not quite exactly what's happening, but not too bad for initializing where the storms are. Now this model has nothing or very, very limited rainfall during the early morning hours and more of a solid line of storms arriving again about the same timing during that mid morning into the early afternoon, kind of quickly racing through and improving weather by the mid afternoon and going into the evening. So the models are starting to get a little bit better of an idea of where these storms will be. And as as far as the impacts go, all modes of severe weather from tornadoes and maybe even long duration tornadoes as the conducive elements for severe or excuse me, uh, supercell thunderstorms, which are uh, thunderstorms that rotate. All of that is in place at the moment. We're going to be watching through the night these storms in central Texas because it's that area associated with the upper level low that will be moving in our direction. This system is already starting to take shape. Here we go with the storms again. Again, very minimal activity out ahead until we get into the uh, kind of eight to nine time frame right ahead of this warm front line or kind of quasi line or cluster of storms still off to the west of us and moving in again about the same timing. Most of us will be in the stormy weather before noon and quickly wrapping up after say 1 to 2 p.m. and immediately improving conditions. Now can't rule out some scattered thunderstorms even behind that line that will continue after after three, four, five o'clock, but the risk of severe weather will be diminishing. As far as flooding rain goes, that looks to be more of a concern a little bit farther to our north. Now, both sides of the lake have the chance with some of these very efficient rain producers. The good news, though, is that with this complex moving very fast and the fact that we haven't had a whole lot of rain in the last couple of weeks, flooding is not as much of an issue. And normally flooding is going to be secondary to a tornadic or strong wind threat. That's what we'll be dealing with early tomorrow. Then the good news is beautiful weather arrives for Thursday, Friday into the weekend for French Quarter Fest and we stay dry into early next week.